J more the very best reviews. Tell them none can contest. We gon' what's good, everybody. Welcome to the show. Appreciate everybody for coming through. Talk about BMF season two, episode two. Break down a little bit more of the episode and some of the scenes. Uh, I am breaking this down live. So if y'all got any comments or anything you all want to talk about in the episode, definitely feel free to, uh, you know, comment and let me know. And I will talk about that in this, uh, you know, live. Now, um, a couple things with this BMF episode. Um, when I did my first reaction for the episode, I had uh, let people know the Mosco, which is my rating for the episode. And I thought it was a very good episode. And I gave it a solid rating of an eight to an eight and a half on the Mosco. So definitely a good episode. Um, and I didn't really have anything negative to say about the episode um, overall for this, uh, you know, BMF season two. Move this damn pillow. <laughs> all right so anyway so um a lot of things happen in this episode um one of the things that i kind of still don't understand and i don't know how they wrote it if this is really how it happened or are they leaving something to us as a surprise but i'm gonna say how are they still broke and still fighting over money when they got a settlement of over a hundred grand in the 80s and i don't know what he doing with the business buying spending up all his money on this business buying cars before they even got started he should have just bought one car let them work that and then as it goes buy another car if he bought two cars then he shouldn't be working at gm no more he need to just work work that gm <laughs> that's all he should be doing is driving that car he shouldn't have another job and terry um trying to go to school and work that business that's going to be difficult. So that's why they should have at least had one car at this moment. Nevertheless, even with the two cars, what did he do? Go buy them and pay them in cash? So what I was saying is, like, the mama shouldn't be having to take out credit card that Sears just so she can get her a little negligee and a negligee, <laughs> a little bit of lingerie. She had to go buy a little bit of lingerie uh, on credit, you know, like that. I don't understand that. So a couple of my theories, does he, does Charles have another family on the side and they just aren't saying it? Or is it something with the writing and maybe they had broke up before they had the money. But because of how it was written, they kind of wrote it where the, the scenes with the money came and they were still together. I'm not quite sure on those details, but it is interesting based off of the show only. It doesn't add up to me. That's the only problem I have with this show so far is that they are way too broke for two parent household and they both work and Meech and Terry, they wasn't even there for a lot of this time now and they still been broke. So what I mean, damn, they still sharing milk from cereal. I mean, and she heartbroken. And one thing Charles said is 
I wish that you wanted me as much as I want you. So he still love her, but he feel like he getting sympathy coochie now. You know, a little pity pie. He don't want no pity pie. He wants some, some givey pie. He want it given to him. Throw it on me. Don't just let me have it. Throw it on me. <laughs> and so she like, you looking at that smut. So she's very sanctified, but at the same time, conflicted and confused because we see she got eyes for Reverend, Reverend Snoopy. So I don't know what the hell may end up happening with that, but we're going to see. Uh, D. Weave, what's good? You say facts, Jay. Damn, buy Shorty some new bras and paint that dining room. Charles is moving like a sucker. You ain't lying. The dining room, it looked like just drywall. They ain't even painted nothing no plaster nothing and that right there is crazy like where is all the money going i don't get it i don't understand what the hell uh you know they doing with the cash so according to the show they still broke no matter what <laughs> and uh i don't know man i think that this is not adding up and something is we they need to write something to make this make sense we got to figure out this season he gambling spending money on another whoop something he got the white woman that just came there working that's about to be the driver is he driving miss daisy come on miss daisy so uh i don't know i think he gonna be sleeping with her and possibly spending money on her, paying her bills, talking about she got laid off, this and that. She need the help. And I think that's where it's going to be. He paying Miss Daisy's bills. Charles been riding Miss Daisy. Come on, Miss Daisy. Charlie, take me around the block. Okay, Miss Daisy. I'm going to take you there. Ooh. Yeah, snap. But that's definitely what's happening right there. <laughs> All right. Now, another thing we see is B. Mickey. He didn't fell for the okie doke. They done slipped him a Mickey. So we see he been trying to get away from Coach Cop a little bit, trying to throw him a little curveball here and there. But Coach, he know the game. And he busted him earlier when he said, who was that on the phone? Oh, I was talking to them about my mom. All right, well, I'm going to have the operator call it back. All right, all right. It was Meech. Uh-huh. I ain't got no reason to lie. Actually, you got two very big reasons to lie, boy. So we later see he going to check on his moms for real. And who do we see? Coach Copperu, right there on the case, like McGruff. And he like, damn, man, come on. We're going to be everywhere? And he said, look, what we found, it wasn't bad for a day's work, but it wasn't no meat. He always got that lip low. It wasn't bad for a day's work, but it wasn't no meat. Shout out to Steve Harris. Don't back I ain't trying to hate, but... <laughs> Anyway, so we see after he didn't put the fear in him and little Mikaru know that he could pop up and do whatever he want and touch him at any time. Then he let him know with the little pamphlet, check this out. And so once he checked out the pamphlet, then he read, he like, man, what's this? He say, look, I pulled some strings. And I got your moms in this new state-of-the-art facility. You know, he like, what? Nobody ain't never done nothing like this for me before. And he said, look, we family. That's the key right there. Family, that means something. That's not. That's more than friends or boys. We, we thick as thieves. Like, we family. So 
when people say we family, like to some people it means something. To some people it don't mean nothing. You know, maybe they don't care about family or treat that that certain way. To me, it means something. So we don't know yet where be Mickey, but when he said that, that was something to put on his head. And uh, they did show that he was thinking about that once he said that. And then what we saw pretty much damn near the next scene is when he was in the record shop and Meech, even though he messed up and he knew he messed up and he tried to come correct, Meech was real cool. And we see that Meech, his whole style of dealing with his, his people is real calm and collected and laid back. He only get upset and is ready to fight or get loud and yelling when it's Terry. So he was real cool, calm, you know, when he was dealing with B, with B Mickey. And B Mickey, like, I know it seemed like I always got an excuse on why I'm not showing up. My bad. He like, man, psh, don't even worry about it, man. We family. Boom. So then once he told him we family right there, that put something on B. Mickey's head again. Whose family are you a part of? You know, and so that right there is going to be important to find out because where is his loyalty going to be? Now, yeah, ain't nobody ever did that for him before uh, by helping out with his moms, but Meech probably would have helped him if he would have said something, but Meech may not have that type of knowledge or pool or information. But Meech is keeping him employed, and they've been boys since yay high. So who's he going to have loyalty to? The copper root that, that put his moms up, looked out, or to his boy since yay high? You know, since they was what? Yay high to a frog's ass. <laughs> so um, that's going to be something to see. And uh, if I had to put my money on it, be Mickey going to be loyal to Meech. And I think that he knew that Meech wasn't going to be there, of course, when he gave that uh, location. When Coach Cop came and busted him on the phone and he gave that info and Coach Cop ended up uh Coach Cop ended up busting Big Mac and, and dumbass that jumped out the window. I think he knew that Meach wouldn't be there, but he sacrificed them just to get him off his back and uh to believe that he he uh trying to tell the truth. So um, I, it'll be interesting to see how many people he sacrificed to keep Coach Cop at bay until it's too late and there's no more of the small timers I won't meet and, and there's nothing else that's going to do, you know. Now, another person that uh, I liked and that I said was still around is my boy Lamar. Now, Lamar lives, but what does he live for? Revenge. Lamar lives for revenge, and he will come back for Meech. And uh, I know Coach Cop thought that Lamar might cooperate and talk to him. Uh, some other people may have even thought that uh, in the show or in, you know, us viewing. But I knew he wasn't. Now, we found out later after he strangled and, and did a Kill Bill volume two up on this piece, Black Mamba, the damn cop security guard, that he didn't escape the prison, I mean the hospital, but he laid out on the street looking like a homeless person. But before he laid out, he made a call, collect. He made one collect call, I guess, called his cuz. And sure enough, he came running with the hearse, but at least he ain't got to put him in the back of it this time. And uh, he helped Lamar 
And so now we'll see because he now know a little bit about Meech and what Meech was on. And now he see his cuz. Will he help Lamar get revenge on Meech and Terry? I think so. I think he won't have a choice. Lamar, once he, as he gets more and more healthy, he going to Debo him and make him help and, and do whatever and say whatever. And so I think Lamar's number one goal and only goal right now is to kill Meech and to disrupt their organization and Terry and all of that after he gets healthy, of course. So I think he going to, you know, recuperate. I guess he must have aggravated the wound again. That's why I was bleeding. But had he you, you maybe pretended like he was still asleep a little longer, maybe get the wound to heal a little more, then come out the coma, maybe he could have did something. I'm not exactly sure on if you could even do that. If you're in a coma and you wake up, could you pretend you back to sleep if you wanted to and they not know the difference? I'm not sure. If you all know, let me know in the uh in in the comments. But uh you know, definitely uh is, is something to see for Lamar. I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do. Shout out to my man Eric Iverson. What's up, brother? You say I hate that the show is on Fridays. I have to work on Fridays and can't stay up at midnight. Shake my head. I feel you, man. I don't like the show on Fridays either. To be honest with you, I uh, would rather it be on Sundays. It's not like it has a lot of competition, but I guess The Last of Us is coming, and I guess they said, oh, well. Gotta drink my Wakanda water. <laughs> but uh, I don't know if it's The Last of Us, because, of course, that's a different network. But it is interesting why they did that. What's up, Miss Jocelyn? You saying the documentary, I didn't see D. Mickey be a snitch. Do you think he did in real life? That's a good question, and uh, I don't think so. I don't think he did snitch in real life, to be honest with you, because if he did, he probably wouldn't be in the documentary, to say the least. And to say the most, he's either dead or in jail. So that's a big, you know, range. But I don't think he would be there if he was snitching. Now, I know that they all did tell to a certain extent. But I don't know the details offhand on what they said or didn't say or whatever. But a lot of them did eventually say and tell on some things. But did they tell on other people? and? get immunity type stuff. I tell on this person so I can go free. I'm not sure about that. Um, so we, I'd have to look into that, but that's a good question. Jocelyn appreciate it. Miss Jocelyn. Uh, how about them Cowboys? <laughs> uh, all right. So, um, you know, overall, like I said, very good episode. I really enjoyed it. One thing that uh, and I got a, I got a few things going on where I'm gonna be able to have my permanent area, studio area to work and do things, and I'm just excited uh, to work and and produce videos. So I'm looking forward to having that completed soon, and I'll just be able to crank out stuff a lot better than uh, I've been able to. Um, but one of the things that I want to talk about in this episode that I think is going to be very important to look forward to 
And uh, some people, I don't know, maybe they uh, think so or maybe they don't. But when Meech came to meet up with K-9 and he brought them girls to the party, one thing that we noticed, and they don't put stuff in shows on purpose, um, and one thing we noticed other than this shirt being a little tight in the, in the chest area, <laughs> no, is that uh, it was this big waterhead Negro, loud, playing dice, and they made it a point for us to hear that over some of the other conversations. And K-9 even said the person that's the loudest normally ain't got much to say, basically. And dude was talking about suck my ding ding and all of that. So I think he definitely going to be a problem, especially when they was right in this scene. You can see him in the background and he kind of talking to K-9 girl. And this one K9 was saying, don't pay him no attention when people that loud. And he said, during this scene, if you listen in the background, he says, I know you K9 girl, but blow on these anyway. You your own woman or whatever. And so he may try to go for K9 girl. And will he become a rival? Will he get killed? If he just get killed like another Rudy Poop goofy like another goof ass dude that be getting killed all the time then that ain't gonna be anything special wouldn't have been worth mentioning like that they didn't do that for anybody else so i think he is going to be formidable to k9 and uh he may even try to take k9's woman because you don't have nobody blow on your balls for luck unless they are available and free to do so. And so uh, <laughs> this dude haircut, boy, he got a razor line bowl. Somebody gave him the straight V for vendetta. And uh, damn, that boy head just got chopped and screwed. Look at that laser lining right there, boy. Woo, Charlie. Damn. That right there is Super Bowl shuffle. Anyway, she got him blowing on them diz ice. That ain't going to be too much good luck coming with that because uh, she is definitely bad. And we did see that he used her not just for her beauty, but for her brain, she's very helpful and that she could speak Arabic and negotiate contracts and stuff for him. So she definitely down with the business, smart. But I think this dude with that smile on his face, I think he got some bad intentions that's going to lead to trouble and K-9 going to take him out. And we already saw... The K-9, he don't let no Cinder fella escape the raft. And he made sure to show him, yeah, I'm happy you brought back this money. Now let me show you something that's going to make you happy. Took him in the back. While everybody's there partying, chilling, this dude got a dead body laid up. Talking about the shoe fits. Letting Meech know, hey. Anybody ever cross you, you're going to have to deal with them appropriately. And it seems Meech is learning a lot of lessons from K-9, the dog pound. Uh, that dude has so much red ketchup on his face. <laughs> Look like a busted ketchup pack. So Meech, he definitely looked and observed and learned not to get crossed and make sure you don't cross nobody that may come back to bite, especially if his name is K-9, may lock jaw on that A. So, you know, I don't know. We'll see. What's up? What's up, Kelly? Lamont Simpson was good. Was good. 
brother Ray. What's up? What's up? Enlightened introvert. What's good? All right. So on uh, BMF, we saw also before all of that happened um, <laughs> that Meech New Connect tried to play him. Now, that's one thing in the dope game that happens very often is that people get robbed and it comes a point when you're in the dope game, are you going to continue? Because once you get robbed, that's your first real test. Because if you try to continue, but you don't want to do anything about them being robbed, whether beating them down and getting your money or shooting them or something, then how can you stay in business when people know they can just rob you and take your work or product or money or whatever, and you won't do anything? How could you be in business? <laughs> so, Meech, getting robbed, knew, for one, he can't be in business getting robbed. Two, he's a dead man because K-9 will kill him if he come back empty handed and the man has showed him time and time again that he kills people I'm not just talking and he even told him you mess this up or you screw me i'll kill you and in the dope game so much shady people so much shady business when you around criminals you know how can you trust them like you said in harlem nights <laughs> you can't trust the criminal everybody criminals you can't trust them so people will steal the dope and say i i got robbed or you know and they stole it you know that that story that that line is old as is the beginning of time i got robbed for the shipment oh uh, okay well don't worry about it and they just took the shipment home themselves you know, so that's another thing. You can't let that happen because if people there with you and they see that they, they, they get robbed, that nothing will happen, <laughs> no retaliation, and you don't try to get the stuff back. So, you know, that's how it can turn so ugly. And uh, Meech, after getting robbed, knew that he was going to either have to pop dude or... I like how Meech is a master thinker in the, in this show. I don't know <laughs> how all of this stuff may have went or down in real life or may not. But he used dude's mom as leverage. Also sending a message, I know where you live, where you lay your head at. Better yet, I know where your mama lay your head at. So you play, not only can we do something to you, we can do something to your mama where my stuff <laughs> and it worked you know because he is a big dude so he probably thought after mom dukes left the room i'm about to beat him up in this kitchen choke him out or something but once meets pulled out the pistola it was a wrap hold them horses i need my things back and if you try something again you know mom dukes is it's so hot. <laughs> so he got the message. And I think that it's going to end up being one of the best partnerships that they have. I think he's going to end up moving so much stuff down there in Cleveland through, thanks to Meech, through the BMF, that uh, he's going to be one of his biggest earners. And probably... They're going to end up being best of friends. So, you know, keep that in here. I, I'm thinking they're going to be best friends, and he probably going to be moving probably some of the most work for Meech, at least in the beginning. I mean, they did go coast to coast damn near, so uh, it probably had a lot of people moving stuff that was moving big weight. But... It definitely was and is going to be one of his first connects. So, definitely. All right. We say, uh, 
One journey. What's up? What's up? You say, I like Friday night BMF review. Okay, that's what's up. So we got some that like the Friday night BMF reviews. Uh, some that, you know, prefer it on the weekends. Some people got to work and other things. So I get it, you know. Um, it is what it is. I would prefer it like it was. Um, but to each his own. It kind of throw me off a little with a show on a Friday. I'm so used to everything on Sundays or a Monday. But, hey, whatever. <laughs> One journey, you say he disrespected K-9. No talking to anyone's woman. Definitely. Um, definitely, definitely disrespect to him. It ain't no talking to anyone's woman. And I think that dude... He already said, I know you K-9 woman. So that means he don't have any fear of K-9. And I think it's going to be problems. Watch. Um, because I don't think anybody else would have been talking to her like that in there. You know, so we'll see how it all turn out. Um, we'll see what else we got. Dame Dollar say, glad you back, Kelly. Uh, one journey, did K-9 die in real life? I'm not sure, but I don't believe that person that he is based off of is dead. But I'm not sure, so do not quote me on that one. Um, Dame say, after Ma got that credit card, she was ready to open the box. She was ready to open that package, and he should have swiped his uh swiped his card in her slot too uh i think that he made a mistake by overthinking it about the card when she was trying to make herself vulnerable to him i think if they would have had that connection it would have released a little bit of endorphins and hormones they could have relaxed Talked about it with a clearer head, got a little of that anger up out of him, a little bit of that venom. And I think that they it would have been better off for him. But instead of talking, they should just went for it. All that talking, it just messed everything up. And secrets in any relationships, poor communication. And secrets destroy a relationship, you know, whatever kind of relationship it is, friendship, relation, marriage, all of that. And another thing that poor communication and secrets can destroy is a business relationship. And we see that now Meech is with his pops and they got very poor communication. They definitely don't see eye to eye, so to speak. And uh, like I can talk, right? And uh, and so, like he told Pops, we in this business together. But the truth of the matter is, it's Terry's business. It's his settlement. It's his money. It was his bullet to the head. And now Pops is half in the business all of a sudden and trying to dictate and tell him, talking about, I don't have to, to ask you about questions about the business. Like he was a, a baby, you know, as if he was beneath him. And I definitely see a problem with that um, because I think that Terry doesn't fully realize yet that he the only one always wearing a suit. We ain't seen Charles wearing a suit. And uh, it's all his money and his business. And it should be Charles wearing the suit and running around, ripping and running and driving everybody right now. And Terry could be sitting back right now and finishing up school. But instead, they got him trying to do both. And so uh, I don't know. And then the woman that he hired, I think that's his main squeeze. 
He been getting a little bit of that white lady poon tang pie. He said, oh, yeah, baby, I, I got a job for you. Ooh-wee. You got lipstick and inflated tie, baby. Mm. Uh, I got a perfect job. Backseat of my car service. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. <laughs> So I don't know, man. I think he uh definitely and then when when Terry find out that he has been using the business to sleep with old girl, mm, that's gonna be interesting. Is he gonna stick with his dad and the business over his mom and her heartache, knowing that Charles cheated on her and left her? Um, mm, that's gonna be a good one. He might fire his daddy for that. <laughs> You're not supposed to be sleeping with the customers. I wouldn't, or the employees. Okay, new rule. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. We'll see. Um, but I think that uh, that that right there. He's going to be out the house soon, Charles, because he's not on good terms with the sun, and all he need is one more spark, I think, and uh, and they going to have a falling out. He ain't on good terms with the moms. We all know about that. And so once it's over with, with Terry, he going to move out the house and be living uh the bachelor life, the sweet life, <laughs> trying to get up with old girl. So I don't know. But then again, would Meech fire him from the job? I don't think so. Now, you know, fun fact, from what I have heard and seen, Pops did go to jail. And, you know, a lot of people went to jail when BMF finally went down. And Pops was one of them that went to jail because his name was on phone. I mean, not on phone, on vehicles and things. And they had that uh that shop where they were customizing vehicles and things. So they'll still have that shop and uh, we'll see what happens. But uh, it looked like Pops is, I don't know, going to be around for a while. But things is going to be shady. We'll see um, how it all turn out. Um, now, we always doing death predictions and things like that. The one person that I think will die and not let live too long is Greasy Easy. Greasy Easy. That ain't Easy E. That's Greasy Easy. <laughs> Greasy E. Greasy E. He don't even got the damn string in the hoodie. Uh, that's how broke he is. I got the hoodie, but I got the string on layaway. <laughs> I got that activated. Give me some more of that juice. No, no, no. Don't pull it out. Don't pull it out, baby. Don't do that. Don't waste the juice, baby. Don't. Don't. Come on, man. They call me Greasy Easy. <laughs> greasy Easy going to get killed before this season over, I think, within the next two episodes. And that's going to bring a lot of heartache on the family. And grandma, she already said, Meech smoking the devil's dandruff up in the house. And don't be, you know, you still ain't, you ain't too old to catch one. And so mama laid it all out. Meech selling drugs, all that. Now he's going to probably get killed in some drug related incident grandma everybody gonna be heartbroken and when meech come to the funeral boy woo, they gonna hate meech and he gonna think everything all good because he paid for this or paid for that and they are not trying to hear it so that's my prediction on what may happen with greasy easy you know so one journey, I'm getting to some of these comments kind of late. You said, uh, that's right. 
Pops should have enjoyed those cookies. He should have brought them closer together, get a load off, feel that warmth and love, feel them sugar walls melt all on that big pulsating salami. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, So, you know, it will be uh, interesting to see how all that works. Another thing that we saw this episode is that Southwest T is getting in good with Lala, and it looks like things may be progressing pretty good with that um, because she he didn't brought her customers she giving him game and it looks like he's listening but at one point and the one part that he messing up at i think is when he got to the airport he just got there he don't even know the ropes He don't know what's going on, who the players are there or whatever. And he complained over paying dude $25, which we don't know how that's about to turn out yet. They could end up towing your car or anything. He talking about we going to organize everybody so we don't have to pay you. Um, I don't know if that's going to work out in his favor. It may. um, But the thing that I think that he needs to worry about is that one thing that I know from Chicago and, uh, Hey, this is New York. I mean, Detroit. So Detroit is similar to Chicago in some, some aspects. And so when this guy came up to him talking about, you know, you Flannery or whatever, don't mess with our brochures. I think he's not realizing that just like in Chicago, the mob owns limo services. The mob allegedly owns limo services. Let me put it that way in air quotes. The mob allegedly has ties and something to do with waste management and waste disposal and you know all kind of other type of businesses uh similar so i think the way dude came at him about a brochure he came with him on some g on some g stuff leaned in on him tricked him first then leaned in on him don't mess with our stuff and i feel him you know you paying to print out your materials and here come this goofball scratching your name out and writing their name and scratching out the phone number. Do who would call this place? If I was looking for a ride, I wouldn't call that. So you scratched out somebody else's brochure and info and wrote your name on it. That's your business card. Well, no, no, no. Look here, man. Ignore the first number, okay? That's that's the old business, old name. I'm trying to save trees. I want to recycle, okay? So look, the number in crayon, that's the new number. Write it down, save it. Make sure you got it because it's good for the next 82 hours, guaranteed, okay? All right. Get back with me, okay? All right. <laughs> so that was corny. That was some goofiness, and dude checked him. But he didn't say, hey, I'll sue. I'll report you. He basically threatened him like, don't don't fork with us, dude. I'll bust your head to the white meat. (laughs) Now, later we see he picked up a good passenger and started to realize that the game that she gave him was real. He peep, she got the Louis Vuitton bag. That's a nice size bag. That's a few stacks right there. I remember when I was in the 80s, my mom had one of those. I remember when uh, she went on a trip. It got ripped by the airport. She was devastated. A big hole. Like they cut it or something. Anyway, <laughs> we see that they're watching. 
I always feel like somebody's watching me. The mob got their eye on him. Both eyes, unlike Terry, something he's unable to do. And so I think it's all going to backfire, touch a class, more like touch that A. And so we'll see how it all turn out. But I think in the end, they're going to have some type of beef. They're going to need to do something physical. Uh, whether he come at Terry, try to do something to their car, or some type of road rage incident or something. Uh, I, I'm not sure. But they may even come to damn near blows or close to it. They may even grab him up somewhere, take him somewhere, threaten him. Give him a couple, you know, body shots or something. So we'll see. But I think he uh, messing with the wrong one. He going to need his buddy Meech, his brother Meech. He going to need his back. And uh, one thing that I thought Meech was tripping was when Terry came through and helped. You shouldn't be tripping on T. You should be trying to figure out what the hell was B. Mickey's doing. And all the other people that were supposed to come through, why they didn't come through and do what they were supposed to do. Now, Terry told the Goofies in the in the record store or whatever to, to fall back, and he was going to handle business. But I don't know, man. It's just a lot of questions that need to be asked, you know, and they're not getting asked. And so I don't think they're going to get the answers they need until they ask those questions. Um, now, um, we saw the, uh, partner, Jen and Juice. I think that she's going to really be legit. The more I think about it, I looked at, uh, the episode again. I think she's legit. I don't think she's there to report on him or to spy on him. I think she really does have his back and, uh, genuinely, it's starting to grow on him like a mole. <laughs> uh, it was funny in this scene where they were at the Asian restaurant trying to eat the food. A lot of the things African-American man has never seen before. And all the things that we know to be Asian, she said, aren't really Asian, which, you know, that was sad for him. <laughs> Cause he had to eat whatever this was, eyeball soup. <laughs> you see his face when he saw that. He like, oh snap! She like, meow. He did like, ain't no cats and dogs in here. It baby cat, baby dog, meow. <laughs> but it was funny, a little little comic relief to lighten the mood. But also what I took from that is that they bonding. They starting to let each other's guard down, you know, and uh, get to know each other a little better. They've been cracking jokes on each other since day one. So that wasn't nothing different. But humor is the key to get through to people in life that are, let's say, have a wall up to protect themselves for whatever reason um so you know we'll see and i don't mean an actual uh you know literal wall but just you know trying to protect yourself all right about to wrap this up pretty soon but before i do got a couple more things to talk about real quick if you all have anything that you want me to talk about on this episode, feel free to put it in the comments and uh, I will talk about it. Or if you have any questions that you want me to talk about for this episode or the show, feel free to put it in the comments and uh, I will go ahead and break it on down and tell you what I think about it, whether it's about this episode or the show in general. So, let's see. 
the last thing that uh, I wanted to talk about on this uh, thing. Oh, and I forgot to tell you all, I add this in. But uh, when I said that uh, Greasy Easy was going to get killed, well, the way Greasy Easy is going to get killed is in that video store. They're going to find out that he was selling drugs in the video store. He going to get killed. They're going to follow the drip, know where he was, what he was doing, follow the drip, know exactly every move he made. They're going to see all of a sudden this little rinky-dink store went to being packed like Blockbuster lying around the corner to get the new release. So, you know... I think that's what's going to happen. They're going to get shot up in there, robbed or something, in there by yourself doing that, no protection. And, uh, you know, they ain't thinking about all that just yet. And that's what's going to happen with Greasy Easy. And uh, once everybody in the family down there knows what happened, they ain't going to want me to come around no more at all. So uh, we'll see what happens with that. All right, let's see. Nika Nichelle. Nika Nichelle, what's up, sis? You say, I think the lady his father hired is not to be trusted. She is going to hurt their business, maybe with touch of class. Ooh, I like that, Nika. I didn't think about that, uh... Now, she probably isn't working with Touch of Class just because he said that she worked with him at the factory and the mama knew her and all of that, but she still could hurt them with that. Maybe start liking somebody there, telling them information, getting paid, who knows what. So that's an option. I like that. I like that, uh, the way you're thinking with her as far as that. And then, uh, you know, I definitely don't think that she's to be trusted. Um, I don't know if she will sleep with him or not, but I think that is more likely than maybe her being a spy or setting him up or whatever with another company. Not that it's not possible. All they got to do is say, hey, we'll give you thousand dollars tell us this that and the other or whatever so you know anything possible i like that that the way you think it know uh battle uh battle rap fan okay and i need glasses so <laughs> battle rap fan that's what's up uh you say when you think they will go to atlanta good good question so right now they are still young and teenage Terry still trying to get out of high school. So I think they won't go until they're about 22, 23, which means that uh, they still got at least another two to, to three years in Detroit based on this show minimum you know um one journey you say correct big meets just frustrated with his brother they still fighting like children into their adult life it caused the collapse that's true i agree uh it did cause the collapse they're fighting with each other uh you know it wasn't good for the organization it it split it and uh it, part of that is what caused a downfall but you know the police and agencies were looking into them but definitely didn't do good for them it wasn't beneficial yeah nika you ain't think about that one yeah I ain't need that at first, but you know, that's the good thing about this. You can we can brainstorm. You give me some ideas. Sometimes I give y'all ideas. We all get entertained. <laughs> you say Terry Carr business is gonna take them to the next level. 
I think so too. And pops need to look into and listen to him about expanding and doing what he was trying to do to set them apart because I don't know what he was thinking, but just having another driver driving around the hood in them town cars is not going to be profitable. And he probably want to try to get, spend more money than <laughs> they're making right now. He He's not a good businessman. And that's the problem. A lot of times in poorer communities, when they do get something and they say they're going to start a business, they don't take business classes or learn about business or anything. They just say, I got enough money. I'm going to file the paperwork and start a business and then figure it out as we go. And, you know, it don't always work that way. So, well, we're getting ready to wrap this one up. Lannister, what is up? Long time no see. Happy to see you. Glad to see a few of you guys that I haven't seen in a long time. And uh, definitely appreciate all the love and support. Everybody, you all been great. Good to see you all. Let me know what you all think in the comments about BMF in this episode. Shout out to the 50 plus people we had watching live uh, Friday night. Um, you all let me know in the comments. Do you guys like BMF on Fridays or you rather be on Sundays? I think somebody mentioned earlier that uh, they didn't like Fridays and somebody else mentioned that it is kind of good. And uh, I believe somebody else mentioned earlier that it uh, is kind of crowded on Sundays, which that is true, especially coming up now. It's about to be crowded with like three shows on a Sunday. So get that. That's one more. I would probably be able to watch something until the next day. So at least this stuff keeps you entertained. Uh, but, you know, we live and we learn. We see. So anyway, let me get up out of here. Yeah, they're going to start with the stash box and the, and the cars and all that. The three shows, uh, The Last of Us, uh, Your Honor, got The Last of Us on HBO, Your Honor on Showtime. You doing? I'm doing BMF right now, and uh, it's another one. Your Honor, BMF, Last of Us. It'll come to me, but that's three right there. Godfather Harlem. That's the fourth one. Godfather Harlem. So it's actually four shows. And uh, yeah, it's about to be busy. Busy as can be. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, it's going to be good, man. It'll be a lot of good shows to watch, so. We'll see what's up. I hope everybody enjoyed this video. I appreciate everybody for coming. Definitely enjoy and appreciate all the support and the love, appreciation. Thanks for watching. I'll see y'all on the next one. Deuces.